I thought I'd throw in an extra step on how to router the edges. You might want rounded edges or you might want square. It's really entirely personal preference on uh, aesthetics. If you want to put a rounded edge onto your speaker, you're going to want to use a power tool. Trying to do it with hand sanding block or something like that, it's going to take you forever. And not only that, it's not going to give you a very accurate edge. It's going to be a bit wonky, which, you know, you can do that as well. If you want that look, that's fine. But if you want that real precise round edge, then what you're going to want to use is a router bit. This router bit is um, called a round over bit. It's a 12 millimeter or 12.5 half inch. And this will give you a really accurate job. The way it works is that they're the ball bearing. The ball bearing will guide against the timber. And then as it rotates, it will take off 12.5 millimeter radius. When doing this, you really want to be safe. You want safety as your main priority because this is incredibly dangerous and you don't want to get your fingers in this. You don't want to put it on, on things that it shouldn't go on because this thing is sharp and it's spinning at something around 30,000 RPM. So this thing really cuts for anything like butter. So please be very, very careful. What you're going to want is safety glasses. You're going to want a mask and you definitely want to do this in a place where you can allow wood chips and dust to go because this is going to make a huge amount of dust. So really outside on your lawn somewhere that's away from any living um, environments because this stuff just dust goes everywhere like you you'll think that you can contain it but you'll just put your hand up on top of something and it'll be like dust i'm doing it in my garage and this dust is everywhere like i'm talking everywhere so your tools that you're going to need is you're going to need a router this is a quarter inch router meaning that the shank is a quarter inch in diameter um, this is the router I would recommend. They call it a trim router because um, it's good for trimming things. But yeah, great tool. It allows you to adjust the height like that. Um, and they're pretty cheap. In Australia, you can pick one of these up for about 100 bucks, all the way up to about I don't know, 500. I really recommend you don't have to spend that much money. If you're gonna do a lot of woodwork and then get yourself something nice like a Makita or if you can afford it, get yourself a Festool, beautiful bit of gear. Um, for me, I've got a, I've got a Makita. This has been going for about five years. served me very well and it's still going. When using the router to do a round over, you really want to make sure that you adjust the guide plate properly. If you go too far down, you're going to get a really hideous looking round over. You're going to have a round over then a step in it. You want to make sure that this plate here is just a little bit above the top of the very edge of that uh, cutter, that, that tip there. And I highly recommend doing it just take a little cut on a sample bit of timber just to get the depth right, making sure that you've um, got the right amount. And if you really want to be safe, what you can do as well, you can take multiple passes. So you can set it up, um, take a small trim and then incrementally go around your speaker. And that's a really great way to do it because what you're doing is that you're going to mitigate the risk of taking big um, gouges in your timber or make some chips. Sometimes if you're working with a real hard wood or something that's prone to splitting, you want to take some real small cuts um, lots of them just so that you mitigate that risk. The way I do my roundover edges is that I'll do the side, um, these side panels first, the top and bottom, flip it over and do the other side panel like that. So taking a cut like that, taking a cut. And when you're coming in with this cut, be very careful not to go all the way. You just want to take it in around about 15 mil from the edge. The reason being is that if you go all the way to the edge, you're at risk of chipping the front panel or the back panel, um, especially when you're coming out of your cut. Because uh, as the blade rotating like that, it's pushing the fibers out and you can, you can chip your wood. So I highly recommend that you just stop 15 mil from the edge. Or if you want to, you can, you can come in from the other side, but even then I wouldn't even do that. I'll just go 15 mil to the edge. From that edge there and that edge there on all sides, get them all done. And then what we're gonna do, flip it up. And we're gonna go around like that. So you'll notice that when we do the sides first, as we go around it, we're following that round radius that we just put in and it just follows through, it's a nice touch. When you're using your router, you wanna be very mindful of not chipping the timber. So when you're coming in, when you're leaving the cut, uh, that's fine like that. But when you're coming in towards the edge and you're gonna hit this edge here, for instance, 
there's a good chance that if you go all the way, you're gonna chip your wood. What you wanna do is come in from this side and then come around. That way, you're cutting away from the potential of chipping your timber. So again, coming like this, following all the way through, you can go around, that's fine. But when you come to this edge, stop, come around the other side, and then do that. That way you really mitigate any risk of um, chipping your timber. If you do chip your timber, um, just glue it on with a bit of super glue or wood glue, leave it for a while, and then go back in with the router afterwards. Uh, when cutting the front and back, I highly recommend using your router on this face, so putting your router plate onto the front panel. Because if you do this way, like that, you're at risk that your ball bearing might just fall into the woofer hole. And if you do that, then you're gonna take a big gouge out of your timber. Also, when you're going over the woofer hole, making sure that you keep this um, router flat. You don't wanna come in here and fall like that. So making sure that it's flat all the way through. Next thing is that be very mindful of where your hands are. See this plate here, how you can uh, see all the way through. Just be very careful. What you can do as well, is that you can mount a bit of wood to the bottom of this router so you've got a bigger plate, you've got something bigger to work with. Um, I highly recommend doing that. Once you've done all your roundovers, you want to go in there with a bit of sandpaper. You want to smoothen out the edges. You also want to get rid of the burn marks that you might have left over. When sanding the edges with your orbital sander, go into a high grit because there's a good chance if you go into a low grit, you're going to put um, imperfection in your roundover. Go in with something like 180 grit or 240 and uh, that way you get a really nice finish. understanding with the power sander you want to go in with some sandpaper um, the reason why you want to do that is you want to get rid of all the circular scratches that the orbital sander might have left because it's spinning around in circles it's not um, sanding in the direction of the grain we really want to go back with some hand sanding get rid of those scratches so I recommend um, I recommend going into 120 grit 180 then 240 so with the orbital sand, I went in with 240 grit, so all the way from 80 to 240, and I showed you how to round over the edges with 240 grit. Once you've done all the sanding with the orbital sander, you've gotten all the burn marks out of the, um, from the router tool, I highly recommend going in with hand sanding block and some sandpaper. So I'll go in, so I went up to 240 grit on the speaker. I did all the edges in 240 grit, all the panels. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go in with 120 grit. I know, of course, you might be wondering, why do that? You just, you know, you got it real smooth. But what the orbital sander does is that when it's rotating, you can actually get radial scratches in your timber and it won't really show up. It'd be hard to see it until you get varnish on. And once you put your varnish on, then you're gonna have to sand all your varnish off and re-sand it out. So I highly recommend it going in with 120, 180 and then 240. And that way you'll get rid of those scratches. With the 120 grit, you're just gonna go across. I'd recommend doing every area 10 times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way, and then move over to the next one, next one, and keep standing like that. So, a little demonstration. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Move over again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've done that all the way to 120 grit. Then what I like to do as well, you get the sandpaper without the sanding block and just wrap it around the edge like that. And that way you can just really blend in that edge and get any of, um, make sure that's really round. Give it a nice touch, like that. You have to do heaps, but just a couple of passes all the way. That looks really nice. With the end bits, you can just hold it like that. And that really blended in nicely. Just keeping in mind though, you'll notice the top panel, 
if you're going to do that be very careful that you don't touch that panel there because you'll notice the grain pattern is going that way so if you do that you're going to put some scratches into it so avoid doing that that's um, I'd recommend just holding it like this and then doing passes like that and when you get to the top like that once you've done 120 grit on all sides dust it all down get rid of any excess dust you don't want any sanding um, any 120 grit sand to be within um, the wood or on the wood so just dust it off then get your 180 grit go in that again count your strokes do 10 passes I recommend and then go 240 grit your final grit get it real smooth taking um, note as well I'd um, do that trick on all your sides as well when you move up the grits and also just in these bits here as well 